every day for 10 days, I'm giving you something you can do to kickstart your students' sense of numbers and increase their fluency with mathematics. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Over the two weeks of this kickstart, I'm giving you an action step each day that you can take towards building your students' number sense and increasing their fluency with mathematics. Now remember, this does not mean your students will magically have number sense and fluency by the end of these two weeks, but we will have kickstarted it and you'll have a roadmap to keep building it throughout the school year. This is day six of the kickstart. If you haven't signed up and gotten the checklist of the 10 things you can do to kickstart number sense this year, head over to buildmathminds.com slash one zero day dash kickstart, and I'll send it over along with the link to the resources page where I'm putting all the resources I mention every day of the kickstart. Yesterday's tip was all about using visuals during math. Visuals are one part of the concrete representational abstract model of mathematics, which is also known as CRA. Now, some of you might know it as concrete pictorial abstract as well, but they're the same thing. Using visuals is important, but it is just one part of this three-part model to help your students build a solid mathematical foundation. Many of us grew up learning math through the abstract symbols and equations. However, research has shown that this approach might not be the most effective way to teach math, especially to our young learners. This is where the concrete representational abstract model comes into play. The CRA model is an instructional strategy used in math education. These models are designed to gradually transition students from hands-on, real-world experience to more symbolic and abstract mathematical thinking. In the concrete stage, this is where your students are introduced to mathematical concepts, typically using physical objects or manipulatives. This hands-on approach allows children to explore and experiment with math in a more tangible way. For example, when you're teaching addition, you might use those counting blocks or reckon racks or other manipulatives. Even as kids progress though into upper elementary, they need to be doing lots of work in this concrete stage to help them understand those quantities that they are working with. The second stage of the CRA model is the representational or pictorial stage. In the representational stage, students transition from those concrete objects to more abstract representations, such as drawings, diagrams, or picture models. This stage encourages your students to visualize mathematical concepts and represent them in a more symbolic form. For instance, let's say you were teaching multiplication and a problem that you give the kids might be about the number of rows in a bookshelf and how many books are in each row. Instead of having the students model the problem in that concrete stage, representation is that they would draw a representation of it. In the abstract stage, students work with traditional mathematical symbols and equations such as the numbers, variables, and just the mathematical operations. All three of these stages are essential to helping your students understand math. However, the biggest mistake I see is using the stages in isolation. I've done it. Even most textbooks set up their lessons with the three different stages all done in isolation. Think about the math concept that you teach and how your textbook lays it out. It is not uncommon to have a chapter on multiplication, for example, that starts out with having students use base 10 blocks to model a problem like 24 times 13 in a concrete way. Then the chapter might teach students how to solve problems like that with the area model to have a way to draw or represent the problem. The chapter might also have other ways that they teach the students to think about multiplication, but towards the end of the chapter, you will see them wanting students to use symbols to solve multiplication problems. So that's when they're just working in that abstract stage. By the time the chapter ends, the students have done lots of ways to solve multi-digit multiplication, but they see them as separate ways. 
there have been no connections made to help the students see how all of these really connect together. Instead, if you do a lesson where the students are using the base 10 blocks, but also then have them draw the aerial model of that problem and solve the problem using symbols, you can then spend time helping kids see connections between them. I've got a visual of these three ways to solve 24 times 13 on the Kickstart resource page. By placing all three of them together, you can help your students start to notice how the same quantities appear over and over each time and why that happens. They start to see how even though they might look different, these ways to solve the problem are actually all the same. Now, there are times when you will want to do a lesson that is only concrete or only representational, or only abstract, or maybe a combination of just two of them. However, when you combine all three, you tend to get those magical classroom moments that are full of ahas by your students. I call this the sweet spot. When all three are combined in a lesson, you will often get that moment at the end of the lesson where you sit back and think, man, that was sweet. So combining the CRA model is important for multiple reasons. It recognizes that students learn differently and at their own pace. By forcing all kids to use base 10 blocks to solve multiplication problems, for example, your students who are quote unquote past that stage are bored. If you make all the students just solve the multiplication problems using the algorithm, now you got some kids who are lost because they don't know how to break apart the numbers like that. When you combine all three together, you're not only allowing kids to solve problems in a way that makes sense to them, you're also helping them make connections between all three models. Instead of memorizing abstract rules and formulas, students build a solid foundation by actively engaging with math concepts in a way that the research on brains tells us will last long-term. The more connections to concepts and ideas that a brain makes, the easier it is to recall that information later. Using CRA also helps prevent the math anxiety that some students develop when faced with abstract symbols and equations early on. By introducing abstract concepts along with the concrete and representational, students build confidence and feel more capable of doing the math. Your action item for day six of this Number Sense Kickstart is to look for ways to combine CRA in your lesson or throughout the whole chapter. There are so many textbooks that have separate lessons using these stages. Take a look and see where you could combine them. Or just take a look at your lesson for tomorrow. Is it concrete, representational, abstract, or maybe a combo of them? If it's only one of them, do you feel like it's okay for where your current group of students is with their understanding? If it is, fine, leave it. But if not, could you use the resource you got yesterday in this kickstart to help you create visuals to bring in more of the concrete and representational stages? I wrote that anticipating that your textbook is most likely focused on the abstract, but if your lesson is just having kids work with the concrete manipulatives, that's kind of missing a point too. Have them draw a representation of the manipulatives and then have them attach the numerals that go with their drawings. With the emphasis on hands-on learning, sometimes we forget that kids need practice with the abstract numerals and symbols as well. One final note on manipulatives, the research around them shows that it does not have to be physical manipulatives. Even virtual manipulatives can be just as effective. If you don't have access to physical manipulatives, don't let that stop you. My favorite place for virtual manipulatives is braininkcamp.com. It is a paid resource because it has so many cool features, but you can also get a free trial on their site. Side note, if you end up taking one of my courses, the flexibility formula, Raining Camp gives it to you for free as part of that course for a year. So check your Kickstarter checklist for information about signing up for the course. Okay? So another favorite of mine that is free is the Math Learning Center apps. They have them for mobile devices, but you can also access them on your computer. Using the concrete representational and abstract model, or CRA, is a powerful way to promote deep understanding cater to diverse learning styles, and help students build confidence in their mathematical abilities. By combining all three of these stages together, you allow your students to explore math in a way that makes sense to them, 
but also helps them see the more formal and abstract ways of doing math while building connections that lay a solid foundation in math and help them retain the information long term. All right, again, the tip for day six, look at ways to combine CRA. All right, if you have not officially joined us yet for this 10-day Number Sense Kickstart, go to buildmathminds.com slash 10-day dash kickstart to sign up. I'll email you the checklist and the link to the resources page. Make sure you are signed up because this is just day six and there are nine other days of tips to help you start the year off with a solid mathematical foundation for your students. That's all for day six and I'll see you back here tomorrow for day seven.